What's going on Halo fans? Luke the Notable here. Today we are going to be talking about what would happen if you spent one million dollars on the Blitz Pack system. Originally I wanted to explore what would happen if you spent one billion dollars on the Blitz Pack system but that got pretty ridiculous pretty fast. So before we get into this we have to understand how Blitz cards work. Unfortunately it wasn't made very clear on how the Blitz Packs worked in Halo Wars 2. There isn't much indication on max level or how much the cards are leveling up each time they actually level up. Where I found out most of the information that I'm going to be talking about in this video is the official strategy guide from Prima Games. They gave me one for free to test out and they also gave me a ton of extra digital and physical copies that you can get in a link in the description. Originally I wanted to give these away in the comment section of another video I did but that ended up not working out so we're just going to use a link in the description. Much easier this way. So officially Blitz cards have no max level. Yeah that's right. Yeah no max level. You could have a level 1 million Blitz card. How these levels work is from level 1 to 6 your Blitz card gets an insane boost to its own armor, health, damage, whatever it is increasing. Now there's a lot of data on this in the strategy guide and it's all laid out, but just to give you one example, a level 6 Cyclops will do 85% more damage than a level 1 Cyclops, assuming that they are attacking a vehicle, which they are a counter to. Well that's a huge boost, man! That's, that's so much! That's so pay to win! I know that's what everyone's gonna say down in the comments section below, but it's actually not that bad because after level 6, you can go on forever with your Blitz cards, but after level 6, the increase increases for damage, armor, health, whatever, get very, very small. So while there is a huge difference between a level 6 Blitz card and a level 1 Blitz card, there is a very, very tiny difference between a level 16 Blitz card and a level 10 Blitz card. Now if you're scared, let me let me just tell you something. I have played someone with a level 6 Blitz card before. He had a level 6 Engineer, I believe. A lot of his other cards were level 4 and level 5, and I was still able to outplay and beat him. Now I know for a fact this dude did drop money on the game because he was a much lower rank than I was, but had higher level Blitz cards, but I still ended up beating him because I was smarter and outplayed him. And I've already gone over in multiple reasons in multiple other videos why you should not buy blitz cards and this is another reason why i've only had the game for like two days at the time that i'm recording this video and i have a couple cards that are level four already okay so let's get on to what would happen if you spent one million dollars on the blitz pack system if you spent a small loan of a million dollars on the best value blitz cards which is 99.99 for 135 blitz cards you would be able to purchase 10,000 of those packs and get yourself 1.35 million blitz cards Cards. All right, so this is where it gets a little complicated. How do we know how many of those Blitz cards are going to be put into which actual cards? We just know that we're going to get 1.35 million. We don't know exactly which cards we're going to get, and I'm not going to spend a million dollars to test this. Okay, so a video I did previously, I found that you would get around 40% common, 29% uncommon, 24% ultra rare, and 7% legendary. That is the average drop rate that I calculated. So if we assume that we get cards at the average drop rate, if we divvy up 1.35 million cards into those percent percentages these are the numbers of Blitz cards we would get in their respective tiers. We're gonna get even more complicated! Now, there are exactly 94 cards in the game right now, 27 of those common, 31 uncommon, 27 ultra rare, and 9 are legendary. Now, for the sake of the video, I just assumed that if I opened all of these Blitz cards, I was going to get 540,000 commons, and all 27 of the common cards in the game would be equally divvied up those 540,000. If this was done perfectly equal, I would get 20,000 of each of the common level Blitz cards. And just for another example, if I was to open $1 million worth of Blitz packs, I would get 94,500 legendary Blitz cards divided equally amongst the nine legendary cards currently in the game. I would get 10,500 of each of the legendary cards. I pretty needlessly made a formula that you can use to do any of these calculations on your own if you're a nerd and want to do that. The formula is X minus 20 divided by five equals the final level of your Blitz card. To save you some boring calculations, I've done them for you, because I'm just a nice guy like that. I found that for common level cards, if you were to spend one million dollars on the Blitz Pack system, most of your common level cards would be around level 4,000. The actual number I got was 3,996. For Legendary, your cards would be around level 2,100. Again, to figure out exactly what these card levels would be, we'd have to like totally open up a million dollars worth of Blitz cards, which ain't gonna happen unless I get some serious ad revenue from this money. So I guess share the video. 
Well, that's all well and good, man, but how strong would a level 4,000 common card be? I mean, really. Okay, let's take a normal marine card. At level 6, which is technically tournament standard for blitz cards, that's the actual verbiage used in this strategy guide here, a normal marine card would have plus 22% health, plus 20% armor, and plus 60% damage. To make our lives a lot less complicated, we're just going to look at this damage stat boost. Now, at level 6, a marine card, like I said before, gets 60% extra damage, not counting the first level, because you don't get any boost for the first level, that's 12% every single level. Now we already know that past level 6, so 7, 8, 9, 10, up into the thousands, Blitz cards do not increase their stats by much, but they do increase their stats. What we're going to assume, because we don't know this number, we're going to assume that it only increases by 10% of what it normally would increase by. So this marine card normally gets an extra 12% damage on each level up until level 6, and we'll say from level 7 on, each time it levels up, it gets 1.2% percent more damage. So according to my calculations, a level 3,996 level marine blitz card would have a just damage boost of 4,848 percent, meaning that it is 48 and a half times stronger than a normal marine card. When I first got the game, I benchmarked a ton of my level one cards, and the marine card can kill an energy core in about 15 seconds. If you spent one million dollars on blitz packs, your marine card would probably be able to kill that energy core in about 0.3 seconds. It'd be fun to test these cards on, say, a Scarab, see how long a level 3,996 marine card could last against the biggest unit in the game. Interestingly, if we look at the sniper card and we apply all of our calculations, we would get a sniper card level of 2,496 if we spent $1 million on the Blitz Pack system. Now, all counter units, which the sniper card is, get a range boost of 15% at level 6, and if we had a level 2,496 sniper card, we would get a range boost of 624%, meaning the sniper card would have six times its normal range. That's probably spanning the entire map, meaning you could put a sniper card at your home base and hit someone at the other side of the map. While I don't think anyone will spend a million dollars on the Blitz Pack system, that'd be kind of dumb. I think if you spent a couple thousand dollars, you might see similar results to this. Obviously, you wouldn't get 48 times stronger Marines, but you'd probably be pretty unstoppable. I think it was a bad decision for 343 to have the cards have an unlimited level. I mean, obviously, that's better for their microtransaction system because there's no way that people can ever stop spending money. There's always incentive to keep playing and keep buying but it's kind of... Yeah. You open yourself up to things like this, where the top players on the leaderboard have just pumped tons of money into the game, and unfortunately, I don't really like it, and I don't think many people do. Doesn't take away from the fun of Blitz Mode, though. While I don't think you should spend any money on microtransactions, Blitz Mode is starting to become my favorite mode in the game. It's just so fun. I love it, and I like making videos on it. Don't let the microtransactions ruin the experience, because unless you're playing someone that has dropped literally thousands of dollars into the game, it's probably not going to be paid to win. But I want to hear what you guys have to think. Please comment down below. I love reading comments. It's my favorite part about YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video on screen. In the top left, you will see my logo. Click that to subscribe. I make tons of interesting Halo Wars and Halo 5 content. And then on the right there is a special video. I chose it just for you. Click that. It's just for you, man. Just for you. I want to thank you all for watching. Please stay notable, and I'll see you in the next video.